so i would be uh, talking in favor of blood sugars as a more important marker in the management of diabetes because we all know that it is not only about control of blood sugars it's also about prevention of complications and also prevention of progression of complications uh, i'm not able to operate it from here okay so still diabetes is a disorder of glucose we all know that with uncontrolled diabetes the risk of complications they do go up and we have umpteenth number of evidences to suggest that with decreasing glucose we can reduce the risk of complications and we know there are targets around but there are pentards there are fancy terms like hexards but we only look at hba1c fasting ppbs glycemic variability hypoglycemia and nocturnal hypoglycemia and i'm not going to backstab a parameter which we all have been targeting since ages so with this brief preamble i'm going to take you through the following points first of all pathophysiologically we all know that indians not only have higher prevalence of diabetes but also we are seeing a surge in early onset diabetes and this, and with this we know that compared to obese non diabetics there is a 50 to 70% lower insulin secretion and 15% per year decline that is more rapid in the beta cell function this is the novel heterogeneous phenotype of type 2 diabetes which we all have been talking about and if we put this into the indian context compared to the europeans the indian cohort predominantly are severely insulin deficient vis-a-vis -vis the western cohorts which are more of mild obesity related and this is the crux of everything that i'm going to talk about because asian indian phenotype this revolves around two important points we have a lower bmi and also we have more abdominal fat so if we want to target weight we need to have a approach which would be taking care of these points so what about the complications is glucose related to complications obviously yes with increasing a1c we know that there is a heightened chance of developing all the complications related to diabetes and you look at all the major landmark trials starting from 1970s till now we can see that all of them have been focusing on intensive versus conventional glycemic control to control the complications about microvascular complications we have enough number of studies in patients having diabetes less than 10 years and we are having diabetes more than equal to 10 years even in patients having obesity and diabetes for control of microvascular complications we require blood glucose control what about macrovascular disease we have evidences in favor of patients having diabetes less than 10 years more than equal to 10 years unfortunately we do not have much but still we know that accord told us that there is a significant reduction of non fatal mi this is a meta analysis published in 2009 which tells us that the overall mass reduction is to the tune of significant 9% and mi is also getting reduced to the tune of 15% with intensive glycemic control this is a cohort study consisting of more than 2 lakh subjects and what we get at the end is that the lower the uh, hb1c you get to there is a higher mass reduction and for per 0.9% hb1c reduction you get a 33% mass reduction not only that we also get protection to our liver as far as all the parameters of nash are concerned covid-19 we are, we cannot uh, we cannot skip this particular topic we also know that by proper glycemic control we can improve the outcome in a patient being admitted for covid-19 and not only that perioperative outcome you can see in intra hospital uh, managed better glycemic management is reflecting on to a better outcome what about cardiovascular risk there are a number of mechanisms proposed epigenetic modification inflammation oxidation age formation but what about the data this one clearly tells us that 1% increase in a1c is associated with 12 to 43% increase in cv events therefore the glucose control needs to take the center stage this again is something interesting 2018 nejn they have tried to look at different variables as far as causation of the acute myocardial infarction is concerned you can see the glycemic the glycated hemoglobin stands first followed by systolic blood pressure followed by ldl cholesterol not only that this meta analysis of 18 trials tells us that there is a reduction of non fatal stroke this trial tells us that early intensive glycemic control is associated with 17% reduction in non fatal mi and 15% reduction in coronary heart disease longevity is it not important yes it is because as the age of onset is getting younger there is higher chance that you will be losing lives 
and if there is a drug which is going to there is something some intervention which is going to impact on your longevity it is definitely important this is jama 2021 which says that reduction of hb1c from highest quartile 9.9% to 5.9% in the first quartile is associated with life expectancy gain of around 3.8 years this is interesting denmark registry which tells us that 10 years before death if you discontinue oral drugs you have higher chances of having death and hglt2 inhibitors we all know these are predominantly anti hyperglycemic agents and it has wonderful beneficial effect as far as reduction of all cause and cardiovascular mortality this was interesting i didn't actually show the content but there are drugs being promote, pro, pro, uh, proposed like the metformin pioglitazone alpha glucosidase inhibitor and the sglt2 inhibitor which are actually helping us in healthy aging process yes there are demerits associated with anti hyperglycemic agents we know that with with each 1% 1 kg increase in uh, body weight there is around 7% increase in chances of heart failure not only that with 3 kg weight gain we are offsetting the advantages out of 1% day 1 reduction i appreciate that fact you look at the weight gain due to the uh, drugs which are used in all these wonderful trials but despite having weight gain have we not witnessed the wonderful microvascular and macrovascular risk reduction that they have given to us let us take the example of these two molecules pyoglitazone and sulfonylurea both are weight gain promoting but then iris and proactive these are cv safe molecule these are cv safety data carolina has actually reimposed our faith on the age old molecule glimepiride and glicalizide thanks to advanced study and there is a concept called metabolic healthy obesity probably these are the drugs which are promoting that state and uh, we cannot exactly negate that and the wonderful beneficial effect of these two drugs the glyphosins and the glutides probably glucose control is the standard of care and the differences may contribute to the benefits as far as all the cardiovascular uh, conditions are concerned what about the guidelines let me uh, recollect the belfast diet study which tells us that as the age progresses the insulin secretion gradually goes down whereas insulin resistance going to a certain level then it becomes plateau so probably we need to look at the insulin dysfunction throughout our life and that's what is important and if you look at the therapeutic target proposed by all the uh, different uh, bodies as far as diabetes is concerned whether it is our national rssdi or the international one we have targets for fasting pp hb1c uh, the tir and we can have more stringent or less stringent, stringent goals but it it revolves revolves around the glycemic targets yes rucha ma'am was alluding to the fact that we are moving on from glucocentric approach to a cardiorenal or vascular glucocentric approach but does that mean glycemic control has uh, taken a back seat we all we all as indians are very much concerned about the mileage what much of mileage that we are getting from a particular intervention and you can see you can see the lines which are circled in red all of them are talking about if avance is not above target if avance is not above target what should be your next course of action so definitely efficacy does matter so lastly i will take another 2 minutes to talk about weight loss what exactly are we doing so ma'am has actually told us several beneficial aspects of weight loss look ahead a wonderful trial i must say that but then uh, even one third of the patients under clinical trial setting fail to achieve 5% of weight loss and after 4 to 6 months there was 4 to 10% weight loss and after then there, there were after that period there was a plateau and unfortunately after that there was a rebound weight gain in one half of the patients so probably you are pushing the patient towards a stage probably where the durability of that particular intervention is not always intact and now let us look at the commonly used weight loss losing strategy and its impact on a1c reduction you can see a1c reduction is a paltry 0.4 to 0.8% and uh, this is something very interesting 2015 it says around 5 to 10% weight loss is required to decrease the risk factors for prediabetes and diabetes but majority of the interventions that we have been using even fail to give you a 5% weight loss so do we have enough of evidences to tell us that weight loss is associated with improvement in vascular outcomes i don't think so and uh, we know there are a number of side effects i need not highlight them 
and there are a number of perceived barriers, but then we require at least 5% as per the study shown by Rucha ma'am as well, but then majority of the interventions fail to showcase that even. So to conclude, we have definite targets for the glycemic parameters for weight, we do not have. Do we have enough evidences to tell us that glycemic control is giving you good life? Yes. Do we have enough evidences? We have evidences, but enough, I won't say. Practicability, how practical it is because of the perceived bar barriers of weight loss regimen, but there are plethora of drugs which can reduce A1C to great extent and there are issues with regards to durability of that particular intervention and as far as Asians are concerned because we have low BMI people and we have more of central adiposity, do we have drugs actually to address this particular aspect? No. So probably we still require glycemic control in addition to weight loss what was promoted by Rucha man. Thank you so much.